Hello, and welcome back to the Fullerton College Print 101 class. This is Professor Ben Kewitt, and today I'm going to give you a demonstration of how to do the layout for a flexographic label using Adobe Illustrator. So it's very similar to our project when we worked on screen printing. Doing a one color job is best done with black as the color, at least in your graphic and your layout. Later on, when you go to print it, a plate that prints one color can have any color of ink put on it. So don't fear that you're being limited to only black and it's only gonna be able to be printed in black and white. It can be printed in blue and white or red and white or green and white or whatever color ink imaginable. So we're gonna create a one color, a little kind of be two color, you'll see in a moment, uh, label to produce this. All the second color is gonna be technical and not actually something that gets printed. For the label we're going to create, we're using a die line of a physical die that already exists for our flexo presses of a label that is three quarters of an inch by one and a half. So in Illustrator, we'll make a new document. And we're not going to use any of the, the saved or recent ones. We're going to create our own here, which is 0 0.75 by 1.5 inches. Bleed is not totally necessary for this if you don't use it, but you know what? It's a good habit to be in. Include an eighth inch bleed whenever you create something. No printer will ever complain if they see an eighth of an inch bleed. Oh, I did it the wrong orientation. Look at that. So here's how to fix that if you accidentally do the wrong orientation. I was going to do mine horizontal rather than vertical. If you go to move this out of my Zoom here, document setup, you can do edit artboards. And then honestly up here where you see the picture of the person in it, you have portrait and landscape. I'm just gonna go ahead and click landscape. That's what I actually wanted. The first thing that needs to be created here is the die line. So this is gonna line up with the die on the actual press. And sometimes if you're doing a job that's custom enough, you might be creating a custom die that doesn't already exist. And this information will be necessary to the die makers to make the right cutout shape because dies are kind of like little cookie cutters on the rolls here. They're going to cut out the edges of our labels. We're going to start with this one by clicking on the rectangle tool or hitting the letter M on your keyboard to bring that up. And there's two ways of doing this. The draggy droppy WYSIWYG uh, version is clicking and dragging a rectangle starting at the corner to make the whole size of your rectangle. But if you want to be precise, you can also click once and you're able to create a rectangle where you type in the size you want. In my case, 1.5 by 0 0.75 inches, and that builds you a rectangle. If you do that, you have to move it into the middle and your guides should help you do that. And if they don't, there you go. It says center right there. If not, you can use the alignment tool to align, I guess what, it's not set to the right thing, align to artboard then you do the center horizontal and the center vertical to get it right there in the middle. From here, we're gonna change the colors. You don't actually want a fill color. I'll do it from the top up here. The fill color should be set to not, and the stroke color needs to be set to something you're not gonna be using and not using in your actual design. If it's black, that's gonna cause you a problem. So here I'm gonna do something a little wonky and go down below the swatches on this to the what looks like a stack of books, which is the swatch libraries menu. Down here, we're gonna to go to color books and down here, we're gonna to go to Pantone's plus solid coated. And you can honestly choose any one of these. I like to use something like Rubin Red because it does not look like any other color I'm gonna be using. Whoops. I actually did the fill color, but you can swatch that, swap those by clicking the little button here and then redoing the no color there. So now I have this. I no longer need my Pantone menu. At this point, you're gonna to want to lock this shape. And that is done by con command if you're a Mac or control if you're a PC, two. Now you can no longer select it. It's still there, but you don't accidentally run into it. From here, I'm going to switch my swatches swatch my switches to a black fill and no stroke, and I'll bring in text. If you click one once, it creates a, whoops, creates a line for your text. 
and you can simply start typing. In fact, it even starts with words. If you want to be more like InDesign, you can click and drag a text box and it will fill it like that. Illustrator does best, especially for things like labels and single juices like this, just by clicking to make the line. You can, if you hold shift, uh, you can do it without shift, but please hold shift. Shift will keep it proportional. You can scale it to the size you want. You can then also, very similar to InDesign, up here at the top where it says character myriad, you can click on that and choose whatever you want. I'm gonna go for one that's kind of fun here and use my Amarillo, Amarillo US Air Force because I like my airplane stencil. And then if you want to use an image, you don't have to use an image, you can bring one in. It can be done very similar Sorry about that, I got lost and thought for a moment on you. It can be very similar to InDesign where you can place an image. So if we go to File, Place, why is there it is, Place right here, you can choose a file that you've already found. I'm gonna navigate myself back to our class and use that same airplane image that I already found that works. Print 101. And the biplane clip art is the one I'm going to bring in here. And just like other places, you click to place. If you click once, it'll place as one solid thing. If you click and drag, you can scale it to the size you want. And this here would actually be a pretty good thing to send through, except for one little detail, which is making sure that only black ink is used. I forgot to mention, you want to make sure your document color mode is set to CMYK color. Should have done that at the very beginning, sorry guys. If it's set to RGB, your black will be set to a weird color and not actually black. And it'll wanna make four plates because RGB black is made out of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black when you translate it, as opposed to just black itself if you set it up in CMYK color mode. This can be saved if I'll save as a PDF because Illustrator is so native to PDF creation that it can do this. Then sample label.pdf. Save. Save. 